and our nation. Please help me to welcome to this rostrum the congressman from the 18th Congr Congressional District, the Honorable Mickey Leland. Thank you, Mr. President, Mr. Chancellor, and those who are here present on the dais, faculty, friends, family members, these beautiful honorees tonight, and you, the honorees, you wonderful students who are graduating here. It is a single honor for me to be present here as your speaker. One would ask, why would Mickey Leland be asked to come and speak at a commencement exercise for young people who are about to proceed into the world at large, if you will, in order that they can pursue their goals that they've been working for so long and so hard for for so many years. And sometimes when I'm asked to speak before audiences like this, in particular the commencement exercises, I sometimes ask myself, because it's been rather difficult over the years for me to remove myself from where you are. But then as I reflect on from whence I have come, I begin to think that it is important for those of us who have achieved some status in life that is somewhat unusual for us to go back time after time to pay our dues, to give some advice to those who would listen. Tonight, you're a captive audience, and here I am. So beautiful you look, and so reflective I can be because I remember just a few years ago I was in your place. Let me say that I think it's special for me to be here tonight. I, as chairman of the House Select Committee on Hunger, have traveled the world. I've seen some of the greatest anguish and some of the most incredible poverty. And true enough, I've seen also great wealth, people with great privilege. I've met princes. I've met kings and queens. I've met prime ministers and presidents. I've met parliamentarians all over the world. I've met people of great status and people of the least status. And I will tell you that the whole world is waiting for you to grow and to become a real part of it. I just got back from Sudan. It was one of the most difficult trips that I've ever taken in my life, if not the most difficult trip. On my way to Sudan, I stopped over in Ethiopia. I visited some of the 400,000 refugees fleeing from the war and famine in Sudan, in Ethiopia. The perverted irony is that people have left Sudan looking for food going to Ethiopia. Think about that. Last year, more than 250,000 people died of starvation in Sudan. Over the last six years, more than a million people have died of starvation and malnutrition in Sudan. Not a natural calamity perpetrated by nature was there in Sudan, but rather man-made calamity, a civil war. And to put that in perspective, more people were killed just last year, or people died last year of hunger and malnutrition in Sudan than all of the people who died in World War II combined in Japan, in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Now just think about those mind-boggling numbers. And if you were able to, as I was, to look into the faces of the people who were suffering so badly there. I think that you would then realize how fortunate you really are. I've seen poverty, by the way, all across this great land. Some in my own community from which I grew up. 
in the Fifth Ward of the north side of Houston. I've seen poverty in Appalachia. And I've seen poverty on the Indian reservations in this nation. But some of the worst poverty that you can see in America is a better circumstance of life than some of the best conditions that I saw in Ethiopia and in Sudan and in many other of the third world countries that I have visited. And so we are truly, truly fortunate here tonight to realize that America has given us so much. But I think that with what we have been given by America, we too have a responsibility to that humanity that I allude to. The people of the world need you. They need your brain trust. They need your work, your energy. They need your expertise. They need your prayers. More than 40,000 people every day die of hunger and malnutrition in this world. That's every day. If 40,000 people were to die in an earthquake tomorrow in Chile or somewhere else, and God forbid that happening, we would all be up in arms and saying that we should contribute as much as we could to help those poor people who are suffering from that natural calamity. But today and tomorrow and for days to come, there will be that many people dying of hunger and malnutrition in the world. Let me put that in perspective. That's 28 people per minute, and 21 of those 28 people are children. That's the sad reality, and yet the newspapers and the media don't print that, or don't show that in your television sets, or talk about that on your radios, or you don't see that in, on the newspaper fronts of the editorial columns. It's the scourge of our lifetime that has to be corrected. And how do we do that? 